Hey there, everyone. It's Anthony back with another video here on Adjust the Camera. <laughs> Single and placing. Hi. Um, this is an incredibly prompt-to evening, um, I guess just kind of finish, um, I guess is what we're going to call this. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to call it. We're not doing a really a whip and chat. It's going to be a rather short video. Um, but I know I say that every time, and this might go long, but I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, if you have been following along with me um, since kind of the be in beginning of my channel, um, let me straighten that a little bit, or, you know, if you're maybe you're fairly new, um, but if you have been following along for a little while, you may have seen this image in the past, and you may have seen it in my stash video because I pulled it out as one of my whips. Um, but this is actually one of the um, first canvases that I bought. No, that's not true. Um, it's a canvas that I bought with the intention of using it for um, Summer with the Masters. So I must have got this at some point in April, I think. Um, and this is the Red Gate of Hongo in Snow by Uniquely Yours Down Under. This is a 90 by 60 centimeter square drill canvas with 41 colors. Um, and it is from the artist Hiroaki Takahashi. It's a woodblock print old master. And I immediately fell in love with the image. I thought it would be so cool to work up as a, as a diamond painting. And so I went ahead and ordered it from Uniquely Yours Down Under. Um, they have a whole section devoted to old masters. Um, so there's plenty to peruse there. And there's another one from the same artist that I really, really like too. Um, so it came in, um, we're just going to kind of tell the whole story here, um, cause that's kind of what this video is devoted to. So it came in and, um, I went ahead and did the unboxing and I immediately ran into kind of a concern, um, when you order from Uniquely Yours Down Under, at least during that time, you had the option to select if you'd like ABs added to your canvas. And so I selected yes, just because at the time, I, any AB is a good AB, right? But um, um, when I received the canvas, I uh, realized that they had included four ABs in this kit, and there wasn't really any sort of rhyme or reason to me why they had selected them. Most companies that I had worked with previously um, chart those ABs or at least there's some sort of reason why they would put them where they put them. And for this kit, um, the rendering or the company um, decided that all of the 5200 would be AB. So you can see how much snow is in the red gate of Hongo in snow. So this entire thing down here, um, it may be, you can't see it through the, the, the transfer paper. I guess I can pull this back at this point. Let's take a look under here because, um, so just to kind of reveal just how much, um, how much white AB. So all of those check symbols, you might not be able to tell the symbol, but it's all that white up there um, coming across here. And this is on top of the roof of the building. There we go. Da, da, da. So needless to say, you know, that amount of uh, 5,200 AB on a single canvas would, at the end of the day, it's just overkill. And I think it really distracts from you know, the, from the image as a whole. Um, and especially when we're talking about an old master's canvas that um, might have, you know, it probably doesn't lend itself to those bright pops and iridescence. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more strategic. Um, and maybe I was a little bit spoiled having worked on, you know, uh, I think it, by that point, a couple of Diamond Art Club kits and was used to hand rendering. Um, and even like diamond dots and just kind of, you know, there's like, oh, we're just going to put this on a leaf or just this on the center of a flower. So to see that massive bag of ABs come in was a little disheartening. And not only that, that's just one of the four ABs. Um, your other two colors of ABs are going to be this uh, 3766 and 996, that's this entire section pretty much just checkerboarded. So this entire piece would be all AB 
pretty much the entire roof is all AB. The only thing that really isn't is a few select lighter blues and a few select reds. But other than that, as I'm, you know, looking at the colors and pulling them out, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is just a, it's just a big old kit of AB drills. And it really, really takes away from, I think, what this image and this style is, is trying to reflect. Um, you have a little non-AB here, but like I said, that whole portion of the sky and all of the white. So, um, you know, when I'm looking through my, <laughs> looking through the drills, I'm just like, no wonder there's just like one container of a few colors and then you'll have like a whole bunch of ABs, you know? <laughs> it's just like, what the, what the heck? So, um, so anyway, I decided after I um, kind of did the unboxing and looked it through to reach out to um, the one of the owners over at Unique Leors Down Under, um, who I had just seen pop up on some lives, and I knew that she uh, sometimes would respond to a lot of the customer care kind of things, and uh, just let her know, you know, hey, I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of 5200 AB here. I mean, I didn't even mention the other colors. The AB was, or the 5200 is really what stood out to me. And so they said, okay, no problem. Let us know um, how much of that AB, or of that regular 5200 that you'll need. And so I sent them back the weight because that is what was on the bag of ABs. It was by weight. And um, there was like quite a bit of a delay. And then I got a response saying we don't, our manufacturer doesn't do them by weight, which was a little confusing because the bag had the weight on it. Um, but I don't know if they were sending it directly from them or the manufacturer. I don't know. So they needed the exact number of, of, um, of non-AB 5200s that I'd need. So I went online and tried to do the conversion best I can by looking up different blog articles and stuff like how many drills are in a gram and try to do the conversion, but it was a ton. You know, I would need, I think it was like almost 18,000 of the white of 5200 to compensate for, um, for all of this AB here. So at that point, communication just kind of fell off the map. I didn't really hear from anybody from Unique Leors Down Under, and we were approaching the time to start um, Summer with the Masters. So I went ahead and decided to um, purchase them myself through Diamond, I think it's Diamond Drills USA. So I just purchased an equal amount of 5,200 and then just told myself that I would kind of scatter in the ABs um, as I see fit. Or maybe, you know what I did? I might have done 70% regular or 50-50. I did some sort of math that way I didn't have to buy exactly the equal amount because it, it would have been very expensive on top of a kit that I believe was somewhere in the 80 to to $100 range um, just by itself. So I pushed forward. The way I wanted to do it is I decided I wanted it to kind of be randomized, the ABs to be randomized. So what I was doing was um, taking, so I've got my 5200 from Diamond Drills USA and then my 5200 ABs. And it's kind of hard to tell, maybe you can tell on camera, but those are actually more of an ivory color compared to like the, the pure white of the 5200. So that was also kind of like eh to me that had I done all of these, it would have given the canvas less of a crisper hue and almost give it more of a dingy look. And I actually think that with the ABs that are placed here, it does that. <laughs> um, so I've been doing what I would call a mix. So I put, you know, about 70% of the regular ones from Diamond Jewels USA, and then a little bit of the AB, and then just shake, 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 da -da -na 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 -na. and that's how I was placing the the snow on here because I couldn't think of any other way to not make it look contrived as far as like the placement. I didn't want it to look too weird. Part of me, once I got probably about, because I started down here, once I got about three sections in, I almost said, forget it, scrape them all off, buy more from Diamond Jewels USA and forget the ABs. But I was just kind of frustrated with the whole interaction, frustrated with the process in general and I decided just to push forward. I kind of was already, by the time I got here, I was kind of over the kit. Although when you do take a step back, that everything comes together and it looks quite nice. It's just such, it, it looks nice, at least on camera, but when you look at it in person, 
I really can't stand the, the AB, that amount of ABs. And if you could have imagined as it was sent to me from the, from the company, the entire thing would have just been all ABs. So it just really threw it off for me. I find it really jarring to look at personally, um, but I pushed through. As you can see, we've got a ton of blue AB through here. There's even red AB in certain areas as well. Um, but I pushed through for the sake of the event. Um, and then I got to about here um, and I de decided to call it quits. Um, at, I had finished Soul of the Rose. I was starting to get used to some more boutique companies outside of Diamond Art Club. Um, I had experience with um, Distracted by Diamonds for Soul of the Rose, Diamond Painting Deutschland, all squares. And beyond just the ABs, I wasn't really feeling super hot with the quality of the square drills that we have here. And not that there was necessarily a lot of trash. I mean, no, not really much trash at all for for trash sake as far as like the nubs and the knobbly bits. But what I did notice, especially when I started working on some of these reds, that I was getting a lot of drills that were almost a little bit more thin than the others and almost kind of the tip, the corners of the square almost come to like a thinner point. So when I go to place other drills next to them, they weren't doing that nice click. They'd almost just kind of overlap on top of each other and I'd have to kind of slide them into place. And so that's frustrating when when you do get that rare moment in a confetti heavy piece like this where you can multi-place, I almost have to always revert back to single placing because they just, they they weren't giving me any help with my placement, I'll just say that. So not terrible, but not great. Um, and so pushed through, pushed through. I wanted to finish, um, I wanted to have this kit for summer with the masters but I ended up completely bailing on it um, during the event. And um, then I got to this square here. And this, even though it's not really, it's not really easy to tell on the camera, this has about eight different shades of red, all confettied within each other. And you can kind of see it here where that looks like maybe it's three or four colors. Now you've got B, N, downward diamond, P, R, G, stars, um, let's see what else, hourglass, uh, did I say G, E, um, and a half, um, uh, half moon or kind of a crescent moon, um, all of those are very similar shades of red, and so doing that much confetti for, even when I pull away, that it, it doesn't really translate to me to that finite of detail, it felt very taxing. This took um, a few hours to get this section done. And I feel like the payoff is just kind of, it's not there. I just don't see it. So I did this section after Summer with the Masters. Um, and I was like, I'll just do a section on it as I can. But it's a whip that's just been looming over, over me and something that I wanted to just push through because, you know, I've had this as a whip since... May. Um, and I was just, it just kept looming over me. And every time I go to kit something else up, I'm like, Anthony, you need to do Red Gate of Hongo. Stop kitting up other things. And then I sit down with it and I'm just like, I don't enjoy working on this kit whatsoever. Like, I feel like I'm fighting myself to keep placing drills. So I pulled it out again tonight, started placing drills on yet another really intensely red confettied section. And the other thing I started to notice too is that when I would try to multi-place, the glue almost has this kind of wetness kind of feel to it. Almost like when you place it, your drills kind of press and slide, press and slide. They don't stick and retain that alignment. They kind of eh, eh, like kind of want to jerk around a little bit as you're letting, getting them settled. So I tried multi-placing here with my four placer and then eventually had to revert back to start single placing. And even single placing, you, that drill hits it and it just kind of gives a little wiggle. And so you really have to go through and kind of clean it up as you go. And I got that far on this section here and I said, I, can't, I just can't, you know, I've used, um, I've, you know, worked on canvases from an, enough companies, I feel like a good enough breadth in my short time of diamond painting. You know, by now I've worked on a few sections from Jaded Gem Shop. Um, I've got some mystical diamond art under my belt in addition to some of those other ones. 
and this just isn't it for me. This, um, I find myself getting very frustrated. I find myself feeling anxious and placing very slowly and getting just generally upset every time I need to work on this kit. And so I'm, I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and um, eat the cost of this one, call it a wash, and move on to something that I will actually enjoy working on. And it brings what I'm looking for out of diamond painting, that kind of calmness, ability to reset, ability to just kind of go with the flow and enjoy the the craft of diamond painting as opposed to feeling like I'm working against the kit to try to make it happen. So I love the imagery. Um, it is an old master's kit and it is still an image that I really want to diamond paint. So I may enlist um, a different company that does customs to do this artwork. Um, I might even do the other one that um, that Uniquely Yours Down Under has on their site because I kind of like that one. It's some junk ships in the sea. Or I might pick a completely different image from the same artist. Um, they're under public domain, so I kind of have that option. So, you know, I really wanted to make this work. I purchased this kit um, with, you know, the understanding that they were kind of a premium, high-end kind of diamond painting um, brand. And while a lot of people have some really, really positive experiences with them, I just didn't find that in working on the Red Gate of Hongo and Snow. And so much so that I'm going to go ahead and toss this one. Um, I'm going to save my drills from, um, from Diamond Drills USA. But just because of some of the odds and ends that I was experiencing with the other colors, I'm just going to, I'm going to toss those as well or put them in my little drill jar. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel really bad because I'm I'm only here to lift up uh, small businesses and companies and highlight the great, you know, out of them. But it was, it's something that I have been tossing and turning over and really working through. Do I keep going for the sake of continuing going? Do I, you know, relinquish to the fact that this just isn't a good experience for me? And so now it's been from, you know, May to October, and I've decided that, no, this just isn't something that I'm willing to keep sitting down with and forcing myself to get through. Um, that's not what I want to do with my time while I'm diamond painting. So um, it's going to go. I have one more kit from Unique Leors Down Under. I purchased it in the same order as this, in its Spirit of Flight from Josephine Wall. Um, I am very, very um, nervous about how that's going to go. Um, because that's another kit that was, you know, um, nearly $200 invested in that kit. Um, but I have to respect the time that I take, um, you know, crafting and stuff. And I want it to be a good experience. And I don't think anyone should feel obligated to force themselves through something when it's just not working out for them. Um, had I come to this realization and just, and just approached it head on and just nipped it in the bud and came to this conclusion sooner, I might have asked for a refund. And I would suggest that if you are working on a canvas from any company that you are just really struggling with, it's not doing what you need it to do from a crafting and anxiety relief and all that stuff, but also, if, and if that comes down to a quality standpoint, which with this, I, I believe it does, then I think you have every right to at least engage in that conversation about figuring out other options with that seller, if possible. Um, once again, I'm here to support businesses. I'm not saying run away from Uniquely Yours Down Under or anything like that. So many people have absolutely wonderful experiences with their canvases. This just wasn't one. And I think that's okay. And I think it's a good data point for other people that might be looking to get this exact kit. Um, my advice would be to not select the include ABs on this kit at all. Um, let them send you regular. And then if you want to invest in some square ABs to include yourself or crystals or whatever that is, do that yourself. But just with how they've decided to select where they go here, it is kind of a mess. So I would steer clear of that. Um, I'm also, once again, with that spirit of flight, I I selected to include ABs there, and I'm also worried about how that might look on that canvas. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't know when I'm going to get to that kit, but if that one's also not ideal for me, then I have some decisions to make at that time. But for now, I want to kit up 
something new, something that will take the place of this, but do it in a way that will bring me joy in my craft, work up really nicely, be ch um, have a rendering and a, a charting pattern that is sensical, <laughs> and then I can really enjoy working on it. But this is this is nonsense to me. So um, yeah, I I don't know that it sucks, and I don't want to be that person. But I've done a kidding up. I've done a couple whipping chats with this. I've mentioned it in my stash. It's come up on. Um, I think Susie's tag, one of her questions for her tag this year was, what's one kit that you regret purchasing? And I said this one. So I wanted to close the book on this, share my final thoughts on it. Um, I appreciate all the hard work and dedication the team at Uniquely Yours Down Under goes through in obtaining their licensing, to getting all of this stuff out to their customers, um, to all of the work and time that they put towards uh, lifting up various organizations um, and charities through their lives that they do fairly frequently. There are a ton of things that I could say about why I think this is an excellent company to consider. Um, this is just my experience with this one canvas, and it's not the end of the road for me and Uniquely Yours Down Under, it's just a pause. So I'm gonna fold this up, I'm gonna toss the uh, drills that are here, and I'm gonna move on. So <laughs> I just wanted to give that kind of closure there. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, need any clarification on anything. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take value out of it. Otherwise, happy placing, and we're going to see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.